Alrighty, thank you everybody for tuning in to episode 5 of the Konoha Companion Podcast. This is Joshua, I'm your Konoha Companion, and on this episode we're going to be covering season 1, episode 5 of Naruto, entitled You Fail, Kakashi's Final Decision. There's a brief description of the episode that goes, With the threat of failure hanging over their heads, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura try everything they know to pass the grueling survival test. This episode picks right up where it stopped last time. Kakashi is literally giving Naruto the speech about thinking before he uses a jutsu and not taking obvious bait. Sasuke hits Kakashi with the ninja stars. Uh, Sakura and Naruto both panic, right? You've taken it too far. Kakashi falls to the ground, and as he hits the ground, he turns into a log, right? Obviously, he's used a substitution jutsu here, uh, as was described in last episode, uh, whenever Sasuke had his internal dialogue that described it in, in detail. Sasuke at this point <clears throat> bolts real hard because he knows that he's given away his position to Kakashi. He thinks to himself, I thought he lowered his guard, but he did that on purpose and I fell for it. Kakashi from his sp- hiding spot eyes Sasuke and notes his location. Sakura is running and thinking to herself, Sasuke, where are you? Don't tell me Kakashi Sensei found you. Which, actually, at this point, Kakashi has found him. She goes on to think, He can't take my Sasuke. I won't let him. She happens upon Kakashi reading his book and hides behind some foliage. And she thinks, Good, he didn't see or hear me. I'm safe. And as she thinks this, Kakashi whispers, Psst, Sakura, behind you. And she turns, and it reveals that Kakashi's literally already behind her. Sakura screams, and it cuts away to Naruto, hanging upside down still. uh, And he finally breaks free. He goes on to say he's for sure not falling for any more of his traps. uh, And he literally lands in a trap and gets snagged into the tree again, the same tree. The title screen comes in at this point, and Naruto, Naruto's voice reads, You fail, Kakashi's final decision. It takes us to Kakashi, who casts a jutsu that causes all the leaves around Sakura to swirl in a really hypnotic pattern, and he vanishes. She snaps out of this hypnotic state and is blatantly confused. Sakura calls for help and she turns uh, and there's Sasuke there and he's bloody and just riddled with kunai, right? Been stabbed several times, still has them sticking out of him. He's leaned up against a tree uh, and he's having a really hard time. This causes Sakura literally to scream and faint. And at this point it shows us Kakashi sitting in a tree reading his book. And he thinks aloud that maybe he overdid it. But that she's got to learn to be able to see through these things. It cuts to Sasuke who thinks the scream he just heard sounds like Sakura. It cuts back to Kakashi, who says, Shinobi battle skill number two, the illusion jutsu. Sakura studied it in class, but she still couldn't see it coming. It cuts back to Sasuke, who thinks aloud, Genjutsu, it's just simple mind control. I'm not surprised he caught Sakura with it, but I'm not like Sakura and Naruto. The screen pans left, revealing Kakashi leaned up against a tree behind him, and he says that uh, you should say that after you get one of these bells, my Sasuke. 
Kakashi steps towards Sasuke and they have a little standoff. Sasuke throws some shuriken at Kakashi and Kakashi dodges them and says there's no point in using normal attacks. Sasuke throws a shuriken and cuts a rope which triggers a trap that Kakashi has to avoid. Uh, and that puts Kakashi in appropriate striking distance and Sasuke comes in with a flying kick that Kakashi blocks with one arm. Uh, he then brings a punch over the top that gets blocked and then he brings another kick over the top which Kakashi grabs with his other hand and so now both of his hands are occupied taking up Sasuke's kicks and Sasuke has two free hands. Um, and Kakashi remarks internally, this kid, you know, obviously, uh, just this kid is performing remarkably, right? And he's remarking internally on account of it. Um, and Kakashi evades right at the last moment, but Sasuke literally touches one of the bells with his hand. Kakashi thinks this kid is fierce. I'm not going to be able to read, uh, make out paradise now. It cuts back to Sakura, who's just now waking up from fainting, and she suddenly remembers the condition she saw Sasuke in, uh, and she calls out for Sasuke. We cut back to Naruto, who's still hanging upside down, having been caught in the trap a second time. He spots the boxes uh, of lunch off in the distance, sitting on a monument, uh, and he frantically starts to get out of the trap. He mockingly says, a ninja must see through deception, and giggles mischievously. It cuts back to Kakashi and Sasuke. Kakashi goes, you certainly are different from the other two. I'll give you that much. Sasuke wastes no time and throws a bunch of hand signs really rapidly and casts the fireball jutsu. Kakashi thinks to himself, Ginning can do fire jutsu, that takes too much chakra, there's no way. And Sasuke does it. He blows a big huge fireball, uh, it basically scorches an entire area in front of him, uh, but when the smoke clears, Kakashi is gone. Sasuke wonders, where did he go? Behind me? Above me? And in that moment, uh, Kakashi's arm erupts out of the ground and grabs Sasuke's leg. And Kakashi announces, where? I'm where you least expect me. Uh, and Kakashi pulls him underground with an Earth-style headhunter jutsu and leaves Sasuke buried to the neck. Kakashi goes on to say, that was ninjutsu, the third shinobi battle type. He goes on to say, you have talent, and you're right. You are different from the others, but different isn't always better. They say the nail that sticks up is the nail that gets hammered down. And he walks away. And it cuts away to Naruto, who's sitting uh, with the box lunches, laughing, saying, Sensei said that if we don't get any bells, we don't get any lunch. But if I eat my lunch now, there's nothing he can do. It's chow time. Uh, and suddenly you hear Kakashi's voice say, Hey there! Uh, and uh, it pans up, revealing that Kakashi is sitting on top of the monument that Naruto is sitting on. Naruto tries to lie his way out of it and say that he was just joking. Kakashi tells him, Nice try. It cuts back to Sasuke, who's still buried to the neck in the ground, and he's thinking, he's stronger than me, there's no getting around that. And in that moment, Sakura comes running by and spots Sasuke. And this is really silly, but she has a complete panic about how Sasuke is just a head without a body, and he's talking, and promptly faints again, right? So she's running along and thinks that this is literally just a talking head on the ground, and that's what's been made of her, uh, of her crush. Sasuke completes his original thought and says, and that's my partner. Sasuke eventually gets free and wakes up Sakura. 
Sakura realizes Sasuke is okay and immediately starts to smother him. Sasuke is able to force her off of him and remarks, I've got to get a bell before lunch and that doesn't leave me much time. Sakura questions Sasuke by asking, you're still trying to get one of those bells? Right, obviously, Sakura, she can't even get within eye shot of Kakashi without getting snuck up on, right? So this is a, a league of difficult that Sakura isn't quite prepared to deal with alone, right? Um, and so she's like, wow, you're, you're really trying, holy, holy shit. Sasuke turns and tells her, a while ago I touched one, and next time I'll get one. Sakura tries to play it cool and tells him, that's amazing, you're amazing, I can't believe you did that. But inside, she is completely panicking because she believes that Sasuke will get one of those bells. And she believes that she has no chance of getting one, and that this is the moment that's going to ultimately lead to their separation. Um, and she just can't have that. She goes on to say, it's almost lunch, uh, and maybe we should just give up and try again next year. Sasuke simply grunts and glares at her, and then turns away. Sakura lowers her head and has a moment of disappointment in herself. Sasuke also has a little moment to himself where he's thinking to himself uh, and we see a figure with an eye that has uh, that's red uh, and it has a pattern going around it um, and I think this is the first time we've seen that um, I don't know but uh, definitely keep a keep an eye out for that moving forward um, Sasuke then goes on to say I'm the only one who can destroy that person uh, and so, obviously, presumably the person uh, with that eye is the person who Sasuke intends to destroy. Sasuke goes on to explain uh, that he's an Avenger, and that he needs to be stronger than his prey, and that there's uh, no time for setbacks. In that moment, Sakura flashes back to when they were introducing themselves to Kakashi uh, for the first time, and Sasuke said that his mission was to destroy a certain someone, right? So she's even tying together that this is all related to him needing to get to destroying the certain somebody and he can't jeopardize getting this critical ninja training, right? In this moment, the alarm goes off for lunch and Sasuke groans and exclaims that he's wasted too much time, turns his back to Sakura and walks off while Sakura watches in silence. It cuts to all of Team 7. Naruto is tied to a post and Sasuke and Sakura are both sitting down. Kakashi tells them he's decided that he's not sending any of them back to the academy. Uh, and Naruto exclaims with joy, right? Obviously, we're, we're not going back to the academy. Uh, that means that we've passed. Sakura has a little moment too uh, and she confusedly questions I passed all I did was faint and fall over do you get points for that uh, but internally she's excitedly exclaiming uh, that love wins out right she gets to stay with Sasuke Sasuke even lets out a pleased little humph, right you know Sasuke short on words but he even he even has a sense of being pleased here <coughs> And as they're all celebrating, Kakashi tells them they're all being dropped from the program permanently. And it takes us to the meeting between Iruka and Lord Third. Um, and that's a cliffhanger right there, right? Like, you just found out that all of our guys are getting dropped from the program, and they're being dropped permanently, right? Obviously, there's no becoming ninja if that's the case. So uh, we're going to see how this transpires. And it, again, takes us back to the meeting between Aruka and Lord Third uh, that we saw begin in the last episode that we covered. And Aruka is pleading that Kakashi fails all of his students. And Lord Third tells him, this group is young, even I can't say if it's good for them to face the rigors and dangers of, of ninja life. However, 
Kakashi was correct about failing all those previous groups. Iruka sighs and looks kind of down to the side, and we cut back to the training room. Naruto is mid freak out, protesting that if they get kicked out permanently, they can never become ninja. Uh, and he's pleading that Kakashi can't just change the rules mid ordeal and asks, why would he do that? Um, and Kakashi basically responds, that I would do that because you're kids. You're not ninja, you're little kids, you're little brats. Uh, and this upsets Sasuke, and he comes rushing, rushing him with a, a clothesline, right? Like old school WWE clothesline move is what it depicts him coming and running with. And Kakashi throws him to the ground with quickness. He has his arm twisted behind him like a cop lock, and he's sitting on him with his foot on his head, just hella disrespectful and tells him you think it's all about you sakura freaks out and screams let go of sasuke you can't step on him like he's a bug you know she's always quick to defend sasuke sasuke tells him you don't know what it means to be a ninja you think it's a game huh why do you think we put you on squads did you even consider that question for a moment Sakura exclaims, I don't know what you mean. Kakashi goes on to say, I mean you never realize what this exercise is all about, not even close. Sakura says she wanted to ask him about that from the start, and Kakashi just kind of goes, and tells him that you have to use your head. Um, why did we put three in a squad? Why would we do that? Naruto screams, how are we supposed to know why you pick three? We didn't make the rules. Kakashi tells him it's so basic. Teamwork. He tells him it's too late now, but if they had all three came at him, they maybe could have gotten the bells. Sakura at this point calls him out for only having two bells and intentionally setting up group conflict and causing the group to break up. Kakashi acknowledges this and says that he did that purposely to pit them against one another. He goes on to say the point of the test was to see if they would put the team over themselves and come together and get the two bells as a team in spite of knowing one of them would go home, but that never crossed their minds. He tells Sakura she obsesses over Sasuke, who's gone. Uh, she obsesses over Sasuke, who was gone, um, and wouldn't help Naruto, uh, who was right in front of her. And she lowers her head in shame. He tells Naruto that he does everything on his own. Everything. And he tells Sasuke that he thinks the others are so far beneath him, they're worthless. Arrogance. And, uh, man, wowee. You know, um, literally all the, all the complaints that I've had about all these characters Kakashi is calling them out for, right? Sakura, you're absorbed in Sasuke. Sasuke, you think too lowly of everybody else and too highly of yourself. And Naruto, you need to be willing to accept help from others, right? Um, and so this is, this is wow, like a, a dope-ass moment where he's being real. Um, too bad they're getting kicked kick the fuck out. <clears throat> He goes on to say, ninja missions are carried out in squads. Of course you need individual skills, but teamwork is the most essential element. Every shinobi understands this. When individuals put themselves above the squad, this can lead to failure and death. For example, Sakura. Kill Naruto now or Sasuke dies. Naruto and Sasuke, or Naruto and Sakura are both super panic at this point. Um, but Kakashi quickly takes the kunai away from Sasuke's throat and go, that's what happens on a mission. Sakura exclaims that was really scary. And Kakashi continues, the enemy takes a hostage and you've got an impossible choice and someone ends up dead. On every mission, your life is on the line. He stands up and walks away from the kids and heads in the direction of the monument. 
he asks if the he asked the kids if they have looked at this stone uh have they looked at the names engraved on it they're all ninja who are honored as heroes in the village naruto interrupts at that point and exclaims that he's gonna have his name engraved on that stone he's not gonna die like a dog for nothing he's gonna die a hero Kakashi says that uh, these are a special kind of hero, uh, and they are all killed in action. He goes on to explain this is a memorial stone, and that the names of his closest friends are engraved there. So uh, we're getting to learn a little bit about Kakashi, right? Um, obviously, he's older. He's been a ninja for a long time. Um, you experience casualties whenever you do this type of stuff, and. Uh, He's saying that literally his closest friends are engraved on that stone. And so, you know, it, it one, prepares these three, right? Uh, of, of, you know, you, you can assume of his three, he's the one left. You know, his closest friends, so more than one, right? So two of three. Um, but, you know, ultimately the chances are is that one of these kids are going to wind up engraved on this stone. Uh, and he's preparing them for that, and it's also letting you know that Kakashi's already gone through some shit, bruh. Kakashi then decides to give them one more chance. Um, but he tells them it's not going to be easy, he's going to make it harder on them. He tells them you'll have three hours to get a bell, so eat now and build up strength. But Naruto doesn't get any. It's his punishment for breaking the rules and trying to eat by himself. He goes on to explain that if anyone tries to feed him, they'll be immediately failed. He then reiterates, I make the rules, you follow them, got it. It cuts back to the meeting between Aruka and Lord Third, and Aruka is on his way out the door. Lord Third stops him and tells him, whether they pass or fail, you must not blame Kakashi. Aruka responds, right and bows his head but you can tell he's really not pleased with how this has transpired and he really wants to blame Kakashi. We cut back to the training ground and Sasuke and Sakura are eating their lunches. Naruto's stomach is growling but he's yelling it's no big deal he can go without eating for days weeks even believe it. His stomach growls again, and he shakily says, you no problem. You know, he's obviously having a hard time. He's just putting on a, a strong face. You know, if you'll remember, uh, Kakashi had them out there at 5 in the morning and then didn't show up for a real long time. Uh, and, you know, but basically, we've been out there since 5, and they hadn't had no breakfast, and this is lunchtime. So you can imagine, you know, they've been running and fighting and doing all this. You're, you're starving at this point. Sasuke groans and hands his plate to Naruto and says, here. Sakura exclaims, no, Sasuke, you can't do that. You heard what Sensei said. And Sasuke responds, Kakashi's gone. We need to get those bells as a team. If Naruto's hungry, he'll be weak and ineffective. That hurts the team and jeopardizes the mission. Sakura thinks it over and hands her, food, hands her food over to Naruto as well. Naruto is obviously moved by this, nearly to the point of tears. Um, and it's cool, man. Uh, you know, they're, they're like, fuck the rules, right? They're thinking for themselves, and I really like that, right? Um, I am not real into subservience and, uh, and mindless following of rules. Uh, I'm all for thinking for yourself and arriving at your own conclusions, and that's exactly what Sasuke did, right? Naruto was like, oh, yo, I'll just go without eating, and even whenever Sasuke handed the plate over, uh, Sakura provided resistance, right? Um, and I really, really like that Sasuke is, like, thinking for himself and, um, listening to things that were said previous, but obviously we're gonna see how this goes, right? If Kakashi's around, they're going to get in trouble. And right in that moment, it pans and reveals that Kakashi is standing behind a tree. Uh, so 
<laughs> we're gonna see how this pans out. Sakura says not to thank her, but to hurry up and eat. Naruto tries to refuse the food by saying it's her lunch. She says that it's not a bother, that she's on a diet, and that she should be the one who gives up the food because she doesn't get as much as Sasuke. She yells for him to just take it, but Naruto can't because he's tied up. And this basically means that uh, Sakura is going to have to feed him. Uh, and she doesn't want to do that. But Sasuke hurries him along and says that Kakashi can be back at any moment. Sakura groans and demands this is the one time that she'll never do this again. And the moment that Naruto takes his first bite, Kakashi comes busting in with a whirlwind and yells, You! You broke the rules. I hope you're ready for the punishment. And he starts throwing hand signs. And he literally calls in a storm. And it starts, you know, lightning and thundering viciously. And he asks them if they have any last words. And all these kids are terrified, but Naruto nuts up and exclaims, You said there are three of us. That's what you said. And Sasuke chimes in, We're all on this squad, and we're all in it together. And Sakura chimes in and says, Yeah, that's right. We have our lunch, uh, and we're all one. And Kakashi approaches menacingly and demands, the three of you are one, that's your excuse. And they stand their ground. And Kakashi smiles and says, you pass. And the kids share a moment of confusion, and Kakashi reiterates that they pass. Sakura asks, what do you mean? And as the clouds clear, Kakashi tells them, that they're the first team that ever passed. Every other squad did exactly what they were told, and they fell into every trap uh, and that they couldn't think for themselves. A ninja must see through deception, and he looks up into the sky and offers, in the ninja world, those who break the rules are scum. That's true. But those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. Naruto teary-eyed admits that Kakashi's kind of cool. Kakashi exclaims with a massive thumbs up. The exercise is over. Everyone passes. Squad 7 starts its first mission tomorrow. The kids exclaim in excitement, and Kakashi tells them, let's go home. Everyone heads home, but they leave Naruto tied up, and Naruto exclaims, you guys forgot to untie me, and the episode ends, right? Um, man, it's official, Squad 7, you know what I'm saying? There was a lot that I wanted to say throughout a bunch of that. Um, watching this the second time, a lot of this is ridiculously palatable. Um, I thought that watching this all a second time would maybe be a bit arduous for the sake of producing the podcast, but I have to say that uh, it's really, really pleasant to watch it and to to see it all again through the eyes of someone who's watched it all the way through Boruto uh, is pretty fascinating. I'm really, really enjoying that experience for myself on top of being able to produce the podcast and, and engage with people online and, you know, be part of the community, as I said I wanted to do. But, uh, you know, to kind of put a bow on things, um, like I said, Squad Seven's finally for real. <clears throat> Kakashi's a real one. Scarecrow, my dude, he, uh, he hit all three of them with the real shit they needed, saying that uh, Sakura's infatuated with Sasuke and that needs to stop saying that Sasuke is full of himself and that shit needs to stop and saying that Naruto uh, is blindedly refusing to accept help from people and going about things by himself uh, and basically called them all out for like the major character flaws that uh, you know I have definitely mentioned or pointed out throughout the entire show which I mean obviously I'm, I'm no genius for it but I mean you know, these things are pretty obviously uh, the issues here, but the fact that uh, Kakashi called it out so blatantly and so clearly in such a critical moment to 
really uh, catalyzed the growth that all those kids needed. It was really dope. Uh, Kakashi obviously uh, is super duper slippery, right? Like several times in the last two episodes, they've thought they've had Kakashi uh, and they haven't even been close, which has been fun. Um, you know, Sasuke did touch the bell one time, but I think that um, hell, even in that moment, he might have been fighting a shadow clone. Or, or a substitution, you know, I think Naruto's the only one doing shadow clones, I think that's actually a forbidden jutsu, if I'm not, yeah, but, uh, the other, other guys do clone jutsu, um, and definitely substitution jutsu, so I would gamble that even if he'd gotten one, it would have turned into, like, some nuts or something, and it would have been the log, and, you know, I doubt that Kakashi was ever even in a, a situation where he was really in any jeopardy of losing those bells at all. And if he was, he was just testing Sasuke to see how good he was, and maybe Sasuke exceeded his expectations a little bit there. But ultimately, we got through it, right? On that note, Sasuke is clearly super talented, right? Um, Naruto and Sakura are both uh, down to do what Kakashi said. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's what I was trying to work towards there, is, uh, Naruto and Sakura are both little followers, right, but Sasuke thought for himself and did what he needed to there, and actually is the guy who, um, got them the win, right, so if you want to, if you want to give anybody the credit for getting Squad 7 to be the first team to ever pass Kakashi's test, it definitely goes to Sasuke. Um, Sasuke needs to come off his high horse. Um, we've already been over that somewhat. Uh, Sakura needs to quit passing out. Um, I don't know if that's going to continue throughout the entire show, but, like, damn it, man, um, you can't passing out every time something happens. Naruto needs to wisen up. The dude can't keep falling into obvious traps. Hopefully, uh, you know, he's young, right? Well, we can give him some passes, but hopefully this isn't, like, a recurring theme 300 episodes down the road. Um, it's so good the second time around. Like I said earlier, my goodness, I mean, some of these quotes, how they relate to stuff that happens down the road, um, it all it all ties together really nicely, and it's really, really cool. Sasuke surprised Kakashi with the fireball jutsu, which is cool. I think that's the first time we've seen any of these kids do any, like, really, like, potentially damaging or high-level jutsu outside of the Shadow Clone jutsu, right? But, um, you know, we haven't seen any big... big you know, giant balls of water or fire or lightning or anything made at this point except for that. So that was cool to see it happen and to see it surprise Kakashi. It kind of really illustrates the level that uh, Sasuke is at. Um, he's even surprising his Jonin level teachers. And, uh, you know, I want to put a bow on it with the final quote that is, in the ninja world, those who break the rules are scum but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. That was the lesson from this episode. That was the thing that Sasuke learned. That was the thing that got these kids through Kakashi's test. And with that, I'm Joshua. I'm your Konoha companion. Thank you so, so much for tuning in, and I'm really hoping that you'll join me on the next episode. Really looking forward to it. Uh, please participate in the comments. Be a part of the community. Let's all be friends. Thank you so much. Have a good one.